Namaskar, I'm Nidhi Kumar and you're watching Science Time, a show that brings you the best that science offers from exciting developments in science and technology to futuristic solutions. India's first indigenously built hydrogen fuel cell bus by CSIR KPIT launched in Pune. Scientists tracked down mystery paddy dwarfing in Punjab and Haryana and India's first observatory to monitor space activity to come up in Uttarakhand. Let's begin with story number one. And India launched its first truly indigenously developed fuel hydrogen cell bus on 21st of August, developed by KPIT CSIR in Pune. The fuel cell utilizes hydrogen and air to generate electricity to power the bus, and the only effluent from the bus is water. For comparison, a single diesel bus plying on long distance routes typically emits 100 tons of CO2 annually, and there are over a million such buses in India. Also, the high efficiency of fuel cell vehicles and the high energy density of hydrogen ensures that the operational costs in rupees per kilometer for fuel cell trucks and buses are lower than diesel powered vehicles. And green hydrogen is an excellent clean energy vector that enables deep decarbonization of difficult to abate emissions industry, steel industry, cement industry, and also from the heavy commercial from the refining industry, fertilizer transportation sector. And India can pole vault from being a net importer of fossil energy to becoming a net exporter of clean hydrogen energy. And with that, let's take you to story number two. Well, many farmers in Punjab and Haryana and even parts of Western Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand have for more than the past fortnight or more stunted paddy plants in their fields. Such stunting typically occurs 30 to 35 days after transplanting or indirect seeding of rice. Initially, all plants register a uniform growth, but at a later stage, some stop growing while others continue. The proportion of dwarfed plants has been generally reported at 10 to 25 percent, even exceeding 40 percent in some cases. Agriculture scientists have narrowed down the cause of a mystery disease causing dwarfing of rice plants in Punjab and Haryana to either grassy stunt virus or phytoplasma bacteria. The vector responsible for their transmission is the brown plant hopper, an insect pest that sucks sap from the stems and leaves of rice plants. And scientists at the Indian Agricultural Research Institute, who had collected samples of plants from farmers' fields which showed symptoms of stunting and yellowing, have undertaken their electron microscopy analysis and DNA isolation through PCR technique. Preliminary laboratory analysis also indicates that phytorio virus or rice grassy stunt virus is the source of infection. This virus, which induces stunting and yellowing of rice plants, is transmitted by brown plant hopper. The infected plants remain stunted even after application of the recommended dose of fertilizers. A preliminary report submitted by the IARI to the Union Agriculture Ministry has said, the second possible source is phytoplasma, a bacterial pathogen that is spread by both brown plant hopper and green leaf hopper sucking insects. And with that, let's take you to story number three. India's first commercial space situational awareness observatory to track objects as small as 10 centimeters in size orbiting the earth will be set up in Uttarakhand's Garhwal region by Digantara, a space sector startup. The Space Situational Awareness Observatory will help India track any activity in space, including that of space debris and military satellites hovering over the region. Currently, the United States is a dominant player in monitoring space debris with observatories in multiple locations and commercial companies providing additional inputs from across the world. The observatory in Uttarakhand will fill the crucial gap in SSA observations in the region, as there is a lack of such facilities between Australia and Southern Africa, Anirudh Sharma, CEO of Digantara, told PTI. The high quality observations, along with those of its partner ground based sensor network, would help improve its ability to monitor events occurring in deep space, especially in the geostationary medium Earth and high Earth orbits. 
And with this, we come to an end of this edition of Science Time. We'll be back with more exciting stories from the world of science next week. Until then, stay tuned to India Science. Namaskar. Namaskar.